Today we are going to build a fun little unstyled component. It's a fade up component and it lets you replace a div with fade up. And uh, you can even add things like a delay so that once you scroll in, anything that is in the viewport gets a nice little animation. And we'll also come over to this little marketing template and see how well it works in kind of some more realistic code scenarios. Um, it's a lot of fun and I think you're going to like it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to get started, let's just add a bit of margin and I'll add a P tag with some lorem ipsum. And to fade this in, uh, we can turn this into a motion.div. And uh, let's go ahead and make this a client component. So we can use frame motion and uh, we can do something like initial opacity zero, animate opacity one. And now when we refresh, we see a little fade in animation here. But of course we want this to happen when we scroll uh, this paragraph into view. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more content here. I'll just wrap this in a div. I'll drop a range here and let's just add a hundred uh, motion.div elements. And I'll grab this. We'll move the class name right here for the margin. And then we can move our P tag in just like this. So now we got a lot of text. Let's go ahead and add some space Y four or maybe eight. And uh, now we got a lot of content here. And if I refresh, uh, we'll see it all kind of fades in right away. Um, but we want this to fade in when we scroll in. And I know Framer Motion has a nice little use and view hook, uh, but this hook has state tied to the component. And since we have a hundred paragraphs here, we want that um, separate standalone component. So each instance can have its own state. So let's go ahead and make a fade up component. And for now, this will take in children which is going to be a React node. And it will return children. And let's go ahead and grab this motion div. And we'll actually return this. Put the children in right here. We don't need a key on this anymore. And we can go ahead and update this to fade up. Get rid of all this, we'll keep the key. And uh, now we have, just like before, all of them fade in as soon as we uh, refresh. Let's go ahead and actually just add a transition with duration of one, just so we can see this a little bit more clearly. So there we see the fade, but now we can add in use and view just like this. So if we look at use and view, we see that it takes in a ref and it returns a Boolean. So we're gonna need a ref right here and we'll put that right up there. We'll stick this on our ref. And now we can pass this in and get is in view from this. So uh, we're getting a type error. Let's go ahead and default this to null. I think that fixes that. And uh, now we have this cool little Boolean. Let's go ahead and bring up our console. And let's just console.log is in view. We're getting a bunch of falses, but at the top we should get some trues. And if I clear this and we scroll, we see that we're getting this kind of reactive state already toggling these different paragraphs uh, to true and false as they scroll into view. So now that we have this Boolean, um, how can we actually imperatively trigger an animation? Well, uh, right here we have initial and animate. So this just happens automatically. But uh, if we were to put these into variants, we could change the state of the component uh, to toggle between variants. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make variants. We'll say hidden is opacity zero and visible is opacity one. And now instead of initial, we can toggle this by saying hidden or visible, just like that. So if we toggle this, we should be in business. Uh, and we can use our is in view to go between visible and hidden. So check this out. If I scroll, we get the fading in 
as soon as the paragraphs show up. And we can even add a little delay right here, maybe 0.5 so we can see it. Now I scroll in and I get the fade in. Pretty cool. Now we notice once we scroll out, um, the earlier ones fade out. I kind of like with effects like this, where you just load it, you scroll down, you get the initial kind of animation just to give some character and life to your page. But once you scroll up, it's kind of annoying when they fade out again. So uh, let's make it happen only once. We'll, say, we'll, we'll create some new state for our fade up component that flips once it's ever been exposed and that way it just stays visible the whole time. So um, we'll just say use state is visible. We'll start this to false and we'll go ahead and grab use state. And down here we'll animate this. If is visible is true, it should be visible, otherwise it's hidden. So now they should all be hidden. It looks like we still have that initial um, state. So let's go ahead and dis disable initial with initial false. So now when we refresh, everything's kind of hidden here. And uh, when should we flip this to true? Well, once is in view is true. So let's go ahead and use effect like this. And if we are in view and we're not visible yet, let's go ahead and set is visible to true. We'll go ahead and auto complete these, save that. And now, if I scroll, we get the fading in, but if I scroll up, everything that's already been faded in um, stays rendered. So let's go to the very top, refresh. We see our fade in works for these. And then we scroll down, and this is pretty cool. And uh, we scroll up and they're there. So this is a nice, perfect use case for some local component state. And in fact, um, just because this is a fade up component, I think it's okay that it fades in when we first render because if you didn't want it to fade up, you wouldn't use that. So, uh, so let's come here. I think instead of just disabling this, let's just make this hidden. Just, I think it's a little bit clear. We're starting off everything as hidden in this component. And then once it's in view, we get the animation. So uh, this is pretty cool. We can have this little fade up component and uh, drop it in and uh, it seems really easy to use. So uh, now let's just tweak the animation a little bit. It's a little boring right now. And after all, this is called fade up. So instead of just changing the opacity, let's change the Y value as well. Um, let's say we start at 20 and we go to zero. So this is gonna start the Y at 20 pixels down. It's a little sluggish. Let's come back to our transition and just delete this. And now we get something that looks pretty cool. Might be a little aggressive, but I like it. Um, maybe 15. And so that's kind of nice and subtle. And I think this is looking good. So we've got our little fade up component. We can wrap uh, some paragraphs of text, but I figured it'd be fun to try it out on kind of a new site and just see how reusable it is and how useful it is. So I made a little marketing app template here with V0. I just typed in you know a few prompts and I installed this uh, with this, with Shad CN, and uh, then you can just click here and copy this and paste it into your app. So that's exactly what I did. If you've never used this before, it's pretty cool. Uh, but if I come over here and look at demo, we'll see all of that uh, JSX right here. So let's go ahead and visit slash demo. And I'll just make this a little smaller and I'll zoom out. And now we have a fun little playground here to try out our fade up component. So let's come here to the H1, revolutionize your mobile experience. So this would be a fun place to try out our fade up component. Let's come back here and export it. And let's just wrap this and fade up. Look at that, refresh, we see it, pretty cool. Let's try wrapping this as well. And now if I refresh, that's pretty neat. And if I scroll down here, we'll see it for the first time. So that's pretty fun too. Um, now I'd like the way to kind of delay these two. I think it'd be fun to be able to just add a delay right here. So I kind of want a delay prop, maybe 0 0.5. Let's come back and add that to our component. That's gonna be a number. And uh, let's go ahead and put that in right here. We'll just pass that right along. And look at that, when I refresh, this is pretty fun, pretty easy to play around. 
Uh, maybe we delay the first one and we'll make it optional so that we don't have to pass it. We'll go ahead and default this to zero and make it optional. So TypeScript's happy there, but if we wanna delay this by 0.5 and then one, something like that, it's a little bit much, maybe 0.3. And now maybe we want to come here and we'll fade in this form as well as the image, which is right here. And let's give both of these a delay of one. So that's pretty cool. Maybe we can make these a little bit slower. Let's go ahead and add duration as well. And I'll start this off at 0.5. And I think this is a spring. So let's say type spring. And then the duration is going to be the duration. Okay, this is pretty cool. So now we can do a little bit more work to make this nice. Maybe we make these two have a duration of one. So they're a little bit slower. That's fun. Maybe let's make this two and four. I kind of like these a little bit longer too. Duration of 0.8. That's a little bit too slow. Maybe 0.3. <laughs> this is where it gets fun. You can see how powerful this is, even for prototyping, even just for trying ideas. Um, these unstyled components are really great. And I like using a component here because it's so easy to add to the template, you know, we can do all of this with hooks. I mean, we're really just wrapping library code, but I think these patterns like unstyled components are great for your own app code. Just because we got our UI components from Shad CN, we're getting used in view from Framer Motion. They're doing all the heavy lifting. Doesn't mean we can't make really useful domain specific components for our app, whether we're prototyping or even shipping code um, and just play around with some different ideas. Uh, let's come down here to our three up, our key features. Everyone loves a feature grid. And uh, I can just grab this. Let's do this one, this one, and this one. And I'll just wrap these and fade up. So now we've got that. Of course, we want to stagger these a little bit. Make these look fun. So let's go ahead and delay 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.6. So we refresh, we come here. Oh, that's pretty. That looks nice. Come down here, got some key features. This is pretty nice. Little fade up, unstyled component. Takes delay and duration. We don't have to make this work for everything. We don't have to expose every option of all of these hooks. This is an extremely easy hook to use and it slots in so well. Just another testament to React's composition story here. Um, I use stuff like this all the time in my apps and um, it's just fun and it helps me explore ideas really, really quickly. So um, this is what I wanted to show you. It's nice actually, this page right here is a server component, but because we're importing from a module with use client, we're good to go. So we can use this in server components, we can use it in client components. And um, yeah, this is a lot of fun. You can imagine wrapping all sorts of stuff in Framer Motion like this. And even if you don't use Framer Motion, if you wanted to implement um, a transition or an animation with CSS or another library, the concept is the same. Um, fade up doesn't care what you pass it, right? We're just rendering children. So you can go to town and do all sorts of work in an effect with CSS um, to trigger things when you're um, in viewport, when, you're, when your size change changes, you can look at whether a container query changes and you want to show something, you can make it so it doesn't always stay there. It shows up every time. Um, but I kind of like this. Uh, you see this in a lot of marketing sites. I like that we use component state here to keep it rendered once we're on the screen. Um, but otherwise, we reveal it once we scroll into view. And uh, yeah, I thought this was a really awesome idea of a neat little component. So uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you today about, show you this cool little unstyled component. I'm actually working on a course right now. It's called Advanced React Component Patterns. We talk about unstyled components. We talk about a bunch more stuff. It's gonna be coming out soon. So if you wanna hear more about that, check out the link in the description and uh, we'll be sending some newsletter updates soon. Otherwise, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.